Hello, hello, everyone. This is Amanda Grace with you. Grace, the dove, is on top of the computer right now. Um, Chet is out. Welcome, welcome to tonight's broadcast. I am going to immediately get my Toledo. We have a lot to talk about. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. Okay. I'm getting ready here, getting my armor on, getting all set. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, help us to put our, your whole and complete armor on us according to Ephesians 6 this day. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray immediately, and then I'm going to talk about a couple of things, and we're going to get right into the meat of uh, what we have tonight because it's super important. I had a dream. This is a very profound prophetic dream, and it is about Donald Trump, interestingly enough. I've only dreamt about him three times. This is the third. Uh, and I also have the word that I delivered from the Lord, uh, power of the Lord hit me and I went into flow and I prophesied in Batavia, New York from the Lord. And so I'm here to read that to you as well. So Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We praise you that you are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality and might. We give you all the glory, honor and praise Do your name. We humble ourselves before you this day, Lord. Let the pull of the flesh become less in our lives so you, your will, and your power can become more in our lives. Father God, I acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to the earth, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and he was the Passover lamb. He was the sacrifice for our sins. He willingly went to the cross at Calvary. He was beaten, bruised, whipped, crushed, and pierced. He died a brutal death, and that blood dripped onto the mercy seat. And purchased us back to you, Father God. When Jesus Christ said, it is finished, there was a great victory had and a show and spectacle made of the enemy and his kingdom before the earth and the heavenlies. I praise you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. He rose again in three days. Jesus Christ did. Send it back in heaven to his rightful place at the right hand of the Father where he rules and reigns forevermore. And I declare that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I honor that sacrifice before you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I invite your presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit to fill this place, to fill this room to just the weight of your glory to fall and saturate the atmosphere that the power of your presence would move, that you would dispatch your holy angels of all rankings and divisions in the name of Jesus Christ to surround the skies and the land here and this place, Father God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, my power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of Almighty God with authority come forth in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, every plot scheme, contract, assignment, weaponry, blueprint, attack, strategy of the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, unclean spirits, willing vessels, and the like, we command in the name of Jesus Christ, be broken, canceled, aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, thwarted, disrupted, blocked, nullified, voided, disarmed, and dismantled, and bound in the name of Jesus Christ, and cast back to the dry places and pits from which they came from, to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ, and not return to have anything set in its place. Father God, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter. We are the clay. You are the author and finisher of faith. You deserve all the glory, honor, and praise, Father God. Without your breath of life in us, we don't have life. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you so much for the birthday well wishes. My birthday is actually Friday, August 19th, and I want to wish two other people a very happy birthday. Today is my dear friend Elisa's birthday. Um, and I just want to wish her the happiest of birthdays. I love her. Um, I think she's amazing and we just pray a very fruitful year for her. Um, and the Lord ordering her steps this year, uh, in Jesus name. And the day after my birthday is Barbara's birthday. Barbara's birthday. My godmother is August 20th. So a very happy birthday to my godmother, Barbara. She has been a wonderful teacher to me. Uh, prophetically, and um, she has just uh, supported me in this. And so uh, we just want to wish her a very happy birthday. She has taught me a lot. The Lord utilized her to give me the foundation that I needed in this to, to do what he has me do now. So we're just wishing her a very happy birthday as well. Um, and yes, in two more days, da -da -da -da, it's my birthday. Okay, so because I'm seeing it all in the chat, so I figured I might as well address it right off the bat. Now, I want to show you a couple of pictures. You know what's kind of funny about this broad, these broadcasts? It opens up with this nice photo album about my life, right? About the animals, about what the Lord is doing. And it's so nice. And it's like I invite you in 
and then I smack you in the face prophetically. Like that is <laughs> what happens, which is a typical Bronx Italian response. So this is almost right on point. Um, so basically, ooh, she just flew right over my head. I just think that's kind of funny and, and comical in a way. I wanted to show you two pictures before we start tonight. Uh, we got a new member at the sanctuary. We do have the video up on Ark of Grace Ministries. We are going to put it up on Ark of Grace Animal Adventures. You can subscribe to that on YouTube. It's a picture of me, Chris, and Moses. And we're going to be putting more and more animal videos on there as well. Uh, when we went to Batavia, New York for Reawaken America, uh, this woman approached me who had a 40-year-old African gray parrot that was a female that was her mother's. And she's been praying for three years for a home for her. And she approached me because she uh, went to Cornerstone Church. Uh, and so it's if we would take her, and I'm thinking another 40-year-old parrot, the Lord's trying to show me something here. So here's a picture of Wally's new girlfriend. We have decided to name her Molly. So we have Molly and Wally, and this is Wally's new girlfriend. He is always hanging out around the cage. I think he's a little bit love-stricken right now. And what an amazing bird. Uh, avian vet already saw her. She checked out really well. And so this is Molly. So welcome, Molly. We'll bring her up when she gets more acclimated. Maybe I could have both her and Wally come up on the broadcast with me. Um, Wally's mom called me his, his former mom um, to congratulate because she was so excited for Wally that he uh, now has another of his own kind because the Lord said it's not good for Wally to be alone, even though he had a pig <laughs> and he had Josie and he sent Wally one of his own kind. So I just think that's adorable. And I want to show you a picture of the three perpetrators here. There's Toby. Moses and Missy trying to literally dig out of the gated area. She's been caught red pawed right here. She was trying to dig a hole and get out. Um, and so I wanted to show you this picture because I thought it was so adorable. Pray for Moses. He had surgery today. He got fixed today. So he's doing very well. He's downstairs. He's a little quieter than usual, but things went very well. And, um, the, the farm vet sent me a picture of the suture area where they sewed him up. And I thought, what am I supposed to do? Make a wallet size with this and keep it in my purse? Like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with this. Maybe they were proud of their work. Um, it was very good work. But he's doing well. Solomon, keep praying for Solomon. He was on death's door. I refused to put him down. Um, I felt in my spirit from the Lord he had to be given a chance here. And Solomon is now standing up in his cage. Solomon the rooster has been given new life. He is standing up. He is gaining strength. He couldn't even move. Um, he is getting better every day. So please continue to pray for Solomon as well. Pray for Boots also. We took Boots the cat in. He was one of the most unadoptable cats at a local rescue. And he's very afraid right now. So just pray that the Lord touches Boots and Boots becomes an incredibly lovable, amazing cat. I really think we can pull something out of this cat. It takes a lot of love and patience when you deal with a cat that's been neglected and was feral part of their life and has been living um, indoors for um, most of their, you know, the past year. So basically pray for him also because he's a friend for Jade. Um, and he's very scared right now. And I have worked with these cats before. I did 10 years worth of feral cat rescue. So I used to take the adult ferals and rehab them and find them homes. So this is my wheelhouse. And this is something that I am, it's not unfamiliar to see when you take in a cat that has had a very neglected life. Um, so just pray for him also. And now we're going to get into What's going on? Oh my goodness. I have to tell you about that. We're going to do the dream first and the word from the Lord after. Okay. This is how we're going to go tonight. Um, this was a dream that I had in the early hours of August 15th, 2022. It's called a dream about Trump food for thought. This, now I will tell you, Barbara helped me interpret this dream she's very good at it she's been gifted by god to do it and so we work together um and this what you're going to hear is the interpretation of this dream um and it's very profound it may not be what you 
expect in some ways, but it's incredibly profound. And I did feel led to share this one publicly. So there are some that I have that the Lord makes me sit on. And I'm, it's not for public uh, saying, it, you know, but in this case, I have been given the nudge in my spirit to go ahead and talk about this. So, okay. So let's get this up here. A dream about Trump food for thought. So here's the dream. I'm going to give you the dream first. I was in some type of high end office down the hall. It was a longer hall was Donald Trump in an office. He was at a big desk. He was working. He was in his typical dark suit and he was working. The Lord um, allowed me to see in the door. So I knew he was there basically. Someone approached me. So then now I'm back down the hallway. Okay. Someone approached me and handed me a plate hastily. Okay. Keep that in mind. That had filet mignon, mashed potatoes, this rich gravy, very rich, heavy food. It was heavy. The plate was filled to the brim. It was heavy. I was told to bring this down the hall to Donald Trump. Suddenly, a chef appears in pure white chef's coat and outfit to my right. Very white. This chef appears. Because I hesitated when I was told to bring this by the person that just ran by and said, here, bring this to him. I hesitated for good reason. So the chef appears and the chef was a representation of the Lord. Okay. And the chef tells me points at the plate of food that I have this heavy plate that I'm holding with like two hands. It's so heavy and tells me this is not what he needs. They're pointing at the food. This plate of food was then taken from me. And then I was given by the chef who was cooking a white plate that had white rice on it with what looked to be pot roast over it. Could be pot roast, could be meatloaf. It looked like pot roast though. With a brown gravy over it was placed in my hands and it was lighter. It was lighter. It was a well-portioned amount of food. So it's placed in my hand and I was told, this is what he needs. Now bring it to him. This is what I'm told. This is what he needs. Now bring it to him. Now go bring it to him. And I said, you want me to bring this to him? Yes was the answer. And I began to walk down the hall towards him. And then I woke up. Okay. Now there's a lot to this dream. It doesn't seem it on the surface, but there's a lot here. So we're going to deal with the first dish first, the heavy, heavy filet mignon and mashed potatoes and tons of food on it, like coming right to the edges. And it's so heavy. The first dish, the delicate dainties and all the things being offered um, to him on this plate. This is what it represents. And it was all those very expensive, tasty, delicate dainties. But he had a full plate. And he has a full plate in his life right now. Proverbs 23 verses one through three says, when you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you and put a knife. Um, it's what's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to read verses one and three. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what is before you do not desire his delicacies for they are deceptive food. Delicate dainties, for they are deceit, okay? Now, interestingly enough, Barbara has, has watched a lot of things, interestingly enough, before this dream even happened, about the president and really what he likes, okay? So what uh, Trump has actually, actually likes and dislikes. And really, he is a man who likes the simple things in life, even though he's very wealthy and he has expensive things. But that's not who he is deep down. So the person who handed me the first plate, that heavy food, thinks they know him and what he needs, but they really don't know him and they don't know what he needs. And this is why it was done in haste and it wasn't thought through because they don't know him. And then the Holy Spirit, while we're interpreting this, takes Barbara back to a time where apparently Trump had this expensive dinner with the president of China or someone in that area. 
Um, going back to that time, um, apparently there was talks about the Middle East and what's going on in the Middle East that were going on. He said he had the best cake he had ever had, apparently, or tasted. So China is very involved right now in this dream and in real life in making his plate way too full with proxies in this nation, okay? Because the white dish, right, the, the plate, the China, because that's what it looked like, and the white rice is a giveaway um, that somehow in the midst of all of this, China is one player involved, which we already know. Um, apparently, this is Barbara told me this, when Donald Trump eats steak, he likes to eat ketchup on his steak, which surprises people, but that's the way he likes it. He is a man of simplicity and comfort when it comes to food. He loves comfort foods. Apparently, his favorite meal, Barbara heard, is a meatloaf sandwich. We could double check that, but that's what she, his favorite food, meaning like she's watched this before, uh, this reported on. A man of simplicity who is being handed very rich things right now. He's a man of simplicity deep down that's being handed very rich things and he doesn't want them. They are handing him anything and everything that doesn't suit him, including perhaps spiritually as well. He is being handed way too rich and heavy food spiritually. His fans have gotten to the point where they have got the wrong impression of him perhaps as well and who he is and what he is and what he isn't. But he's got a full plate with what's going on. How the enemy is trying to attack him and the people have put a lot of pressure on him. He has not spoken a ton yet about running for re-election. He has said he's made a decision. He hasn't spoken a ton, a ton about it. Um, I'm not saying either way. I'm just saying he's spoken here and there about it. Uh, he is trying to take some of this stuff off his plate, not necessarily re-election, but he's got a very full plate. There are things he's trying to take off his plate. He's trying to get his ducks in a row, trying to get the good people in and take the bad people out and get them off his plate so that he can put in the house the people who are supposed to be there to be advantageous to the people. Okay, so we can put in the house the people who are supposed to be advantageous to the people. Now, this is where the second plate comes in. The white plate with the white rice, with the pot roast over it, with the gravy. Okay. A person in a white chef's outfit who stops me holding this heavy plate of food, who is to my right and says, this is not what he needs. And I am handed that dish with the pot roast and told this is what he needs. Now go give it to him. It was an order. There is a part of him on that plate. He needs God and he needs to be the right person. He needs to be molded by the Lord as we all need to be molded by the Lord. He needs to be the right person for the right time for almighty God. Okay. So everything needs to align. Um, he also needs to be served that comfort. He needs to be served that comfort right now. That's comfort food. What he needs right now, truly him and his family are comfort, prayer, and ministering to him in such a way that he can relate to it. He can digest it. There is a lot he is being served that he cannot relate to right now or digest. And it's too rich and it's too much. That pot roast over rice represents what he really relates to. It just seems like so many people out there are running right now and clamoring to get to the Trumps and put their own opinions or spiritually going over his head right now when what he really needs is comfort from the Holy Spirit, the right words spoken to him, the right words said, and the encouragement to do the things the Lord wants him to do. He needs to be comforted and equipped and built up in a way he can digest and relate to. 
There's a lot of heavy things you can tell him spiritually, but he will not digest it. And it will not do any good. This is what he needs. You see, Donald Trump knows what to do. He knows. But he needs that comfort and reassurance right now because he is human. He's a human in a difficult position with a full plate. He knows what to do. He needs the encouragement and building up right now because he does have a lot on his plate. I felt how heavy that plate was that they wanted to give him. But basically, he's been put through hell, him and his family have been put through hell. And right now, they need someone or people that can give him guidance, comfort, and something that he is acquainted with, that he can relate to, to help him digest spiritually, to build him up, that will affect the natural. Because if you think about it, this was a businessman in the private sector who ran for president, put himself in a position he was totally unfamiliar with, and did a lot in the nation, and negotiated successfully with other nations and made them yield. If we think about this, if we think about it this way, if we can surmise it, I'm saying, you know what I mean? There's a lot more there, but we, we're surmising it right now. This also has to do with the lives of Biden and Afghanistan and the other disasters that have occurred in this nation since. The, and before even that they caused the delicate dainties, the deceit that runs sweet and beware of them. What is on that plate is part of what they are giving Trump. Biden and that administration as well. What is on that plate? Delicate dainties of deceit. And some of it may be sweet, but you have to beware of them because what is on that plate is part of what they are giving Trump. A full plate of delicate dainties that is deceit. And that this is only partially with Biden. It may look good, but it is horrible for you at the moment. It may look good. It's going to do nothing for you, but weigh you down. And if you think about it, a chef feeds you. So the chef appeared, right? And said to me, no, 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 you're not going to give him that. So a chef feeds you. The spiritual comes in this person. The chef is telling me this is what he needs to be fed the word of God. He needs that comfort, that reassurance, that peace of God that surpasses all understanding from him being fed the word. The people around him should be feeding him the word. Psalm 103 says, verses five and six, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. This is what he needs to be eating in the spiritual to help him because he does have a full plate and is still negotiating with certain people. If we look at what's happening with the elections, the special elections that have started leading to November, the people want to vote for whom Trump backs. Now, there's something to this here. Because, and we'll go back to it in a minute. We'll go back to this point in a minute about the people are voting for whom Trump backs. We'll go back to that, hold that thought. People are trying to express their bigness by putting the burden on Trump's children or anyone they could try and promote themselves on. And they are giving Trump this big plate of delicate dainties and richness and heaviness and giving their opinion and not God's word. This is what these two plates represent. The first one represents what I just read. Not only Donald, but Melania, who needs a lot of prayer right now. Just pray for her. Pray for the whole family. They need a lot of prayer. But Donald is the head of the family, and he perhaps needs to become more of a comforting family man, which will be part of God bringing him forth. Because that was comfort food. Deep down in him, there is humility. It is there. And it will be brought to the surface. He will be comforted. It will be brought to the surface. The people with the fancy plate of food for him, the richness and the heaviness, are advisors in different areas. They are just serving themselves and their egos. It's not about really helping equip him, Trump, to become what the Lord desires him to be 
to run the race set before him and walk in the total will of God. It's about them and their egos and elevating themselves. It's really not comforting and equipping and putting the word into him to run the race that's set before him. Whom will you serve? The people are looking to Trump as a way out from what happened with Biden, this disaster that happened. And the people on that plate of rich food are giving the wrong information and deceitfully that are trying to serve what they want on that plate to these leaders. They're giving wrong information. They're being deceptive about it. And they're trying to serve what they want to serve, not what God wants served. You see, when they, they, when they hastily handed me this plate of food and I hesitated, because I knew in my spirit, even the dream, this wasn't right. I was given that comfort food. I was given, this is what you're going to serve. The Lord is saying, this is what you're going to serve. What I tell you to serve. You're not going to serve what you want to serve. You're not going to serve what looks rich. You're not going to serve what looks totally elegant and appetizing. You're not going to serve what is just such a full, full plate of food. You're going to serve the amount and portion in what I tell you to serve. You see, that's the alignment we have to get into with the Lord right now. If we are going to minister to leaders. I believe the Lord is moving him in the right direction. It's very difficult right now, given the things that have happened, but I believe the Lord is navigating. Um, and in get, he's getting the house in order. He is utilizing Trump right now to get the house in DC in order and cleaning out the swamp by endorsing those who will be advantageous for the people by endorsing and replacing one by one, by one, by one, and getting the house in order and purging it of the infection that is festered in it for a very long time. This is something very heavy. This is something that is so heavy that they are carrying. It is a heavy, heavy plate that he's being given. And that's not what he needs. There are many people out there right now who are glorifying themselves and not the Lord. And the Lord says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Barbara went into a word and this came out. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. They're glorifying themselves and not the Lord right now with all of this. There is something that has gone forth to seduce many in the church. And it's entangling them in a sidebar away from God. No more sidebars. That's what it's doing. It's taking them on a sidebar that really God does not see as all that important in the scheme of things. And the church at the same time has to get right so they can see these things. So they can see when someone's being given the wrong plate of food, spiritual food, advice, The wrong direction, um, moving them in the wrong direction. I mean, there's a point where what one thinks a leader needs and what God thinks a leader needs are two different things. Where one, what one thinks a leader needs in their self and what God thinks a leader needs in that moment are two things. You know why? Because God can see the inward parts of the heart that man can't. That's why that plate was taken away from me. He said, no, this is what he needs. Because God can see into the inward part of his heart right now. And his thoughts and what he really needs. Only God can see that. So only God would know what he really needs. Man thinks they know. Man thinks they can give him all this richness and heaviness in advice, spiritual, you know, leadership, legal, and give him all this richness and heaviness. But God sees into the inmost parts of the heart and knows exactly what he needs. And what God is saying he needs right now and what he's being given are two different things. And I was told to take that plate of food down to the hall and serve him, to take that to him and give it to him because it's comfort. It's comfort. 
It's spiritual comfort food of the word of God and building someone up that is under the immense pressure of the enemy's attacks. When one is under that much attack, they need to be built up in the word. They need the word spoken into them. They need that activated. They need to be encouraged and they need it in portions. And in a way they can digest. Because if they can't digest, they're going to vomit it right back out. And it's going to be all for nothing and it's going to make a mess. So this is what you need to pray for because right now all of that rich food is malnourishing him. It's malnourishing him. It's not giving him what he needs. It's not nourishing him with what he needs. It's not nourishing his family with what they need either. This is what they need. The comfort and the love and that anointing that only God can bring upon someone when they are ministered to by a vessel of God that is called forth to deliver that in that hour. So you need to pray about this. You need to pray for them because that's what they need right now. They need comfort. They need to be built up. They are getting a lot of things thrown at them, a lot of heaviness, a lot of richness, a lot of big quantities. We'll call it of food. That is too much for one to eat in a city. And they're trying to give it to him all at once. And make thank you, Grace, and make him eat it. That's not what he needs. He needs a proportioned comfort food of the word of God served to him in a way he can understand to build him up. And to comfort him and his family and his kids. Because a lot has happened to them in the past six months. A lot. And I think there is a Bible verse that has to do with this. Um, Hold on. We're going to look this up live. Isaiah 40. Hold on. I'm going to read it. Isaiah 40. It's funny. This number 40 keeps coming up with me. The the two 40-year-old parrots. Now Isaiah 40. Comfort. Yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight. And the rough place is smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That is Isaiah 40, 1 through 5. That I just read. Isaiah 40, 1 through 5. Isaiah 40 plus 5 verses equals 45. Isn't that interesting? Thank you, Lord, for prompting me to look that up. Isaiah 40 plus five verses equals 45. So praise the Lord that he prompted me to look that up. Okay. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, so now we're going to go from here. We're at 36 minutes into the word of the Lord that I delivered from the Lord in Batavia, New York at Reawaken America. The spirit of the Lord literally hit me and I went off like a rocket. I mean, there was like no control over my mouth at that point. Like the Lord, just the spirit of the Lord hit me and I went off. So let's uh, go to this word. I'm going to read you the whole thing because I went into New York first and then this, uh, and then flow in the prophetic and, and giving the word of the Lord. And a lot of you didn't see this because they were messing with the internet. And so uh, this is why I want to read it to you. Okay. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read this part of the prophecy about New York from August 2nd, 2022. I'm reading you the transcript. 
And then we're going to allow the Lord to work. So I'm just going to pray quick by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God. May only the truth and power of almighty God with authority come forth in Jesus name. Lord, let us have the humble privilege of being vessels of your power. I'm going to go into New York. August 2nd, 2022. Watch New York going to the end of the year for unexpected changes upon Albany, says the Lord of hosts. They have rebelliously chosen to go off into the darkness where one cannot see and to maintain control, have released into New York another that shall make itself plain shortly. That's capitalized. However, says the Lord, there is a bear trap and it shall catch their foot and bring them down. Check mommy's talking from their lofty position for they have not learned. Excuse me, sir. Okay. There is a bear trap and it shall catch their foot and bring them down from their lofty position. For they have not learned from the fall of the former and shall become even more shameful for what they have done. And this shall trigger a vein in the spirit that runs to California, says the Lord. Events in the political arena in tandem watch and see, says the Lord of hosts, for much will flip. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get Chet and I'm going to bring him over here and I'm going to let him be on my shoulder while I read this. Um, so he pipes down because he is being very noisy right now. Come here. Come here. Ready? Come here. Okay. Here he is. He's going to be nice and quiet now because he's got mommy's attention. Because he was stirring everybody else up. He was stirring everybody up. Okay. Praise the Lord. New York is the carotid artery to D.C. It's one of the biggest valves that pumps into DC what it needs to cause all the damage it does. And you know, when you want to shut off a valve, what do you do? You sever it, you pinch it and you sever it. And I promise you the leadership of New York over the next year is going to feel the biggest pinch they have ever felt in their life. Cuomo was nothing. What happened with Cuomo was nothing. The leadership of New York was warned that if they did not learn from the fall of the former, their fall would be twice as bad. And this is coming because New York, there is a very intense territorial spirit that resides over New York. I can feel it in the atmosphere. I've lived here my whole life and I can feel it and it's there and it needs to be broken. And you know where it's going to run? California, because it's the same atmosphere, but it needs to be broken. And we're going to call on the Lord to break this in the atmosphere because this spirit has been sitting on top of the Empire State Building and the Freedom Tower and every other tower it's been playing leapfrog with for way too long. So in a few minutes, we're going to pray. Help me with this. Lord, the Lord is getting ready in a very unexpected way to deliver this nation. The best moves in chess are unexpected, unexpected. And when somebody chooses to go all in and blitz and overplay what they've done and take all their available resources and go all in and put all of their eggs in one basket, do you know what happens when that basket tips over? You have a bunch of cracked shells and spilled yolks all over the place. And they put all their eggs in one basket. They have taken them and they have put them all in one basket. And the name of that basket is called Destroy Trump and anybody that loves this nation. And they have bet on this. Except the problem is that house, that, that the house has the advantage. The people have the advantage right now. There are more of you than there is of them. When Elijah was telling the king of Assyria what was happening, he was saying what the king of Assyria Assyria was saying in his bedroom to the king of Israel, the king of Assyria sent the whole army after one man, one man, excuse me, sir. And when his servant came out and saw this vast army, he got scared. And Elijah told him to take courage because there's more that are for us and with us than that are against us. And he prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And he saw the hills filled with fiery chariots, holy warring angels. The holy army of the living God was surrounding them and they didn't even know it. They are surrounded right now and they don't even know it. The Lord has dispatched a vast army in this nation and he has dispatched it to surround this nation. And there have been major battles, not only going on in the heavenlies, but on the ground. And you have to take courage right now because there are more that are for us than are against us. God has not abandoned this nation. There are wicked people trying to take over a covenant that's not theirs, but he has not abandoned it. And the Lord thy God says this day, take courage, my children, in this hour. Fear not, my children, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Behold, I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, says the Lord of hosts. 
And says the Lord of hosts, in this hour, I shall shake the undercurrent of the entire legal system of the three letter agencies. I shall shake the undercurrent of every corporate conglomerate, says the Lord, that has partnered with them to try to bait and catch. But says the Lord, I am fishers of men, not them. And I, the Lord thy God, have put the bait in the water. And I, the Lord thy God, have laid out the nets for a catch. And the net they have laid in this hour, says the Lord thy God, they shall fall into themselves. The trap that they have laid, says the Lord thy God, they will fall into themselves. For I contend with those who contend with you, says the Lord. Take courage, O leaders who have been stolen from. Take courage, O leaders that have been ostracized. I will contend with those in this hour who contend with you, says the Lord thy God this day. And you will see, says the Lord thy God, over the next three months, says the Lord, you will see an entire overturning of the political system in various states and in D.C. Their fishing expedition will turn on them, says the Lord thy God this day, because I am a God of justice and I am raising up judges, judges who once were for them, but will now be against them. For I am touching the heart of the judges. I am bearing down the conviction on them and the millstone shall be hung around their necks with their charges. Excuse me, Chet, you cannot do that. With their charges on them for what they have done to my people, says the Lord. So, so take courage in this hour. Know this day you serve a mighty God. I am ordering the steps right now with the leadership. I am flanking them. I am protecting them. I am going to open their eyes that they are going to see what they never were able to see before. I am going to give them, says the Lord thy God, this day one simple stone that I will carve out of the plans of the wicked, the faulty rock and foundation they have built. I shall carve that stone out of their plans and I shall hand that stone to the ones I have anointed. And they are each going to get one shot, says the Lord. And if they go in with faith and they go in with intercession and they go in understanding, I am the leader here, not them, that they need me to win this battle, for the battle is the Lord's. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord God this day in this hour, and vengeance I shall carry out, because I love my children, and I have anointed the leadership, and that anointing is not revocable, says the Lord thy God this day. And though they try to rebel and revoke it and smear it and tarnish it, I, the Lord thy God, this day shall clean all the mudslinging. I shall take from the ashes, and I, the Lord thy God, shall deliver my people in this hour, Cleave unto me. Know this day you serve a mighty God. And know this day that you shall hear the sound of clashing symbols as these clashes take place. Because there shall be clashes first, says the Lord, and then the battle shall be won on the hill. Thus says the Lord of hosts in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I felt the anointing of God all over that reading. If that was delivered in Batavia, New York, it fired out of my mouth like a rocket when I delivered this word. Oh, glory be to God. So this is what the Lord wants you to know. This is what he wants you to know in this hour. The Lord does speak, but you have to seek him. Meaning it could take me weeks, over a month to get a word from the Lord. Because you have to seek him. This is not an everyday firing off at will thing. You know what I mean? When it comes to the prophetic for me. This is a deep seeking and waiting on the Lord and praising him and praying in the spirit and reading the word every day and getting into these areas with the Lord and allowing him to speak to me what he wants to speak. It's not about my agenda in the dream. This is not what he needs. This is what he needs. This is what you're going to give him. You see, so it's not about my agenda. It's about what God wants to say, what God wants to serve and what God wants to to feed his people and his leaders and we are there simply as servants to receive that and then go forth in that instruction in that word in that prophecy and that is what we are supposed to do um prophecy is not a haphazard thing and it gets haphazard with people and it muddies it up and it mucks it up and it discredits it so you have to be careful Prophetically, what you do, what you say, when you tell a leader to do something, because you're going to be held accountable for that. This is serious. The Lord snatched that, that plate out of my hand. Nope, this is not what he's getting. This is what you're going to give him. That was an order. It's not my will. It's his will. Be done. 
and that his will was comfort and food he could digest in the quantity he could digest it, that comforts, that comforts and builds up and equips and then raises up that leader and, and strengthens them in an hour where they may feel weak, tired, frustrated, scared, nervous, and it comforts them because the presence of the Lord is very comforting when you're seeking him for the right reasons. Very comforting. When the presence of the Lord enters this room, I know because I are a lot, the atmosphere is filled with it. So when I walk upstairs, the second I step foot on the top step, I feel the presence of the Lord moving in the room because it's there. You know, it's like creating almost like, I don't want to say a portal, but you're creating, uh, it's kind of is a portal, but you're creating an atmosphere where it is saturated with prayer and praise and worship of almighty God. And the Lord is invited to move in that atmosphere and to speak to you what he desires that day, not what you desire. And you shouldn't be speaking to any leader what you desire, what you think he needs, what you think he wants to hear, what you think he should do. You should be speaking to him what God says he needs, what God says he needs to hear, what God says he needs to do. There is a huge, huge difference. And people need to get that in this hour. It's a huge, huge difference. People get before leaders and suddenly they want to pile on them. And they can't digest it. You go before with God's agenda. You don't go forth with your agenda. If God allows you the privilege of speaking to a leader, if he allows you in your sinful state, that privilege that is not to be taken lightly and you are going as a messenger of God to strictly speak forth what he once said, because that is the most important thing that needs to be said to that leader in that moment, in that second, that is what they need. What they want and what they need are two different things. What you want to tell them and what you need to tell them are many times two different things. And you have to go forth with what God needs you to say, not with what you want to say, not with what they want to hear, what they need, because ultimately that will take root, that will flourish, that will build them up, that will ready them and strengthen them and equip them and empower them in the Lord to go forth in the will of God and run the race set before them and press towards the mark of the high calling until they have fulfilled the call that God has put on their life. It is a heavy call when a leader is called by God. It is a heavy call. It is a tough call. And you have a lot of armchair quarterbacks sitting there wanting to scrutinize their every move. And I'm going to tell you something. If you could carry it, God would have given it to you. If you could carry it. And we have to understand that. It is a difficult job to be a leader. It is a burden to bear. It is heavy. It is a responsibility. It is serious. It is not roses and rainbows. And they're called by God to do a very difficult thing that they cannot do without God's grace, favor, and anointing clearing the way for them to do it. Because in our humanness, in our flesh, we cannot do it. But with God, all things are possible for those who believe. Excuse me, you two chasing each other. Do you see this going on in back of me? With God, all things are possible to those who believe. And you can only be equipped properly when you are in right standing with the Lord. When you veer, when you sidebar, when you start getting into vices, when you start getting into the flesh, you are not in right standing with God and you cannot be at the helm and lead properly. It is not possible and you will cause a crash. This is why when leaders get scared, they do foolish things that cost the nation sometimes because they get scared. And if they don't have the right people around them, steadying them in the Lord, in the storm, because Jesus is in the boat. If you don't have that atmosphere, there is going to be a bad decision made. This is why the most successful kings in the word of God, over and over again, you can look, listened to 
the prophets. Listen to the seers. Na uh, David had Nathan the prophet and Gad the seer. Hezekiah had Isaiah. So you, you have a slew of kings who had spiritual advisors that they listened to him. They listened to them. And it, it saved them from a lot of disaster. Sometimes they still veered and they had to bring a hard correction. Like when Nathan went marching into the king and said, it was you, you took his lamb. You did this. You took Bathsheba. You killed Uriah. And he walked right in and he, there was a, a hard correction that came. And in this hour, there is a very hard correction coming to leaders because they are steering a shaky ship. They are steering a compromised ship. They are compromised themselves. And a hard correction is coming in this hour to them because it needs to happen. A hard correction came to David when he veered and there's a hard correction coming again. Praise the Lord. It's okay. Grace and Chet get along for the most part. So we're good. But we're at 54 minutes. I think this is where I'm going to end tonight. I feel, I feel the presence of the Lord. So praise the Lord. We are just going in Jesus name. Um, and I give God all the glory. So I pray this minister to you. This helped you maybe understand some more things. It opened my eyes to things also. Why? Hello. She flies over my head at the end. Open my eyes to many things that I did I, in a way I didn't know. Um, and I'm going to tell you in an election, you are not voting for a pastor. You are voting for a leader. Remember this, you are not voting for a pastor. You are voting for a leader and they have much different qualities. And normally leaders are way more brazen and they've got way more sometimes of a check and past. Um, pastors at times also, but I'm just saying, remember that. Remember that because God looks at the internal workings of the heart that man cannot see nor discern. So he knows what we need, when we need it, how we need it delivered. And we may not like it at the time, but we need it. You know, when a parent goes, no, this is what you need. And it don't feel good. And you don't want what you need. You want what you want. But when you finally allow what you need to have its full work in you, you look back and you go, thank God that person gave me what I needed and not what I wanted. And these leaders are going to look back. The Lord is, is going to raise up advisors for them that are going to do this. And then they're going to look back and go, thank God they gave me what I needed and not what I wanted. That is going to come forth out of their mouths, even publicly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. I think this is where we're going to end for tonight. I, I give, I've put a lot out there. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it's not easy to put this stuff out there. You know, you got to do it because the Lord wants you to do it. Doesn't mean it's easy. So praise the Lord for that. I am going to go and look so we can um, just, uh, let me see here. We're going to put a couple up for you. If you go to MyPillow.com and use promo code ARC, you can save up to 66% or more off of all MyPillow products. I think they have my coffee now too. So I think promo code ARC may work, uh, but it's called My Coffee. So now they have coffee um, as well. They're more than just pillows. Uh, our animals love their dog beds. We have their dog beds um, and uh, they love them. Uh, Simeon loves to lay on them, although he will be going outside full time shortly. Uh, so you can use that promo code for that. And then... We are also going to, let me see here. What else can I give you before we go? Let me see here. Here we go. We're going to put Andrew up. This is Andrew from Beverly Hills Precious Metals. If you email him or call this number, they will get you in touch with an agent. Please be patient with them. But they deal in all gold and silver. Um, and, and Andrew is a believer. 
Um, and so we're happy to bless him with this. It's good to kind of help other companies that love this country and people that want to serve the Lord um, because it helps us serve a purpose, uh, you know, that kind of goes around uh, these big corporations that take your money only to hurt you. So we see that a lot where that happens. Um, and so we're happy to be a blessing for them um, and, and help them as well. And that's it. My birthday is the 19th of August. I'm getting asked this question a lot in chat. It is all Friday, August 19th is indeed my birthday. Well, wow. Some of us share the same birthday. Well, happy birthday to all of you out there who are watching, who are August babies, whose birthday is August 19th. Um, and praise the Lord. Oh, they're saying my volume is it's not where it usually is. And I'm a loud talker. So I'm just telling you, I don't know uh, what is, uh, let's see here. Um, I don't think I can do it here. But we'll try to fix the mic for next time. Some people are saying they're hearing me a little too low. Uh, we'll have to go into StreamYard and do that. But let me see, audio. Nope, we have everything on. No, it's showing good audio. So it may be the social media as well. So just keep that in mind. So God bless everyone. Keep the faith. If I can come on quick on Friday, I will, because Chris likes to serenade me for my birthday. So if I can come on Friday quick, I most definitely will. Um, if not, it'll probably be Sunday or um, our Monday that I will be back on. But we will announce, because we have to go back and revisit Solomon and Adonijah. And we have to go back and revisit that whole political coup and what happened. Um, because it's just way too similar to what's happening now. Um, and when we interviewed Lance, he talked about this too. The Solomon Adonijah said, oh my goodness, I did a teaching about this last year. Talking about this and warning about this. So I may revisit that uh, for everybody just to get everybody up to speed again because I think it's that important. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. We love you. We're so happy we get to meet you when we do, uh, you know, have to go out and about me and Chris and travel. Um, we uh, praise God that we get to meet many of you. Thank you for watching. You know, none of you have to watch. None of you have to give us the time of day. And I just give all glory to God and very much appreciate where he has where he has brought us in this, because without God, this would have never happened. So we give God all the glory, um, all the praise and. Uh, Praise the Lord. Keep the faith. Armor up. Have a mạng xã hội, nội dung của bạn có thể bị chìm trong dòng thông tin dày đặc. Thứ ba, email marketing có khả năng tích hợp rất dễ dàng. Rất dễ dàng để tích hợp email marketing với các chiến dịch email marketing khác. Bạn có thể kết hợp với quảng cáo Google hay Facebook cho các chương trình khuyến mãi, giới thiệu sản phẩm mới, cập nhật thông tin, tuyển dụng. Nhờ đó bạn có thể tạo ra một chiến dịch đa kênh mạnh mẽ. Thứ tư, email marketing giúp tăng doanh số bán hàng. Bạn có thể dùng email marketing để tăng doanh thu theo nhiều cách, chẳng hạn như thông báo về việc các ưu đãi đặc biệt giảm giá hoặc chương trình khuyến mãi cho khách hàng, sắp xếp danh sách email thành các nhóm dựa trên sở thích hành vi hoặc loại sản phẩm mà người tiêu dùng đã mua, sau đó gửi email tùy chỉnh, cá nhân hóa theo từng nhóm. Nếu bạn bán thời trang nam và nữ, bạn có thể gửi các email khác nhau cho hai nhóm này, chứ không phải cùng một thông điệp chung. Bạn cũng có thể nghiên cứu và theo dõi thời gian mà đối tượng khách hàng thường đọc email để gửi chúng vào thời điểm phù hợp nhất. Thứ năm, email marketing không tốn kém đầu tư. Thực sự là như vậy. Email marketing cho nhiều brand có thể khẳng định rằng email marketing không hề tốn kém. Bạn chỉ cần mua email marketing platform như Clavio để rồi có thể bắt đầu ngay vào việc xây dựng pop-up để thu để thu thập email subscriber, thiết lập các chuỗi email tự động và tạo chiến dịch email. Ngân sách chi trả cho platform là cố định hàng tháng và có thể tăng thêm tùy theo số lượng.